Hey guys, welcome back to Authentic Small Holding. I am Jazz and Liv. Roo. And it is now October. Finally fallen over into birthday month. <laughs> but um, also it's a good foraging month. But um, we are, I'm just trying to hide from the sun. There we go. We are going on a little forage. We've had some people ask to make a video um, as we go so that we can show you some of the things that we forage and maybe help you identify a few plants that are safe for you to eat and use. So we're nearly at the meadow, so I'll be able to show you, gosh it's bright. After weeks of rain this sunshine's lovely but it's not great for filming is it? So we'll show you some of the things we're going to forage. First off, everybody knows nettles. Um, we're not going to forage these today, but I just thought I'd point them out to you. They are very, very good for you. And mostly nettles are harvested in the spring. So it's really helpful if you use tough gloves to pick them up. It is, it is, isn't it? Because so in case you, if you have bare hands, you might get stings or yes. other types of gloves. You have to get tough gloves yes. that will be able to not be stinged for. Yeah, the thing is with nettles, once you've picked them and cooked them, they lose their sting, so you don't need to worry about ingesting them and them stinging inside. Um, you can make nestle soup, you can use them as like spinach, and they're really high in vitamins like A, C, K, and B, I think, and amino acids and that. And probably iron. Yes, iron as well. Oh, what did you want to tell them? Um, so there's a different type of nettle that um, actually doesn't sting you, which is really good. What was so, that called? dead nettle. Dead nettle. So what a dead nettle does when you pick it with bare hands it doesn't do anything to you it's just perfect. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it has pure white um, flowers on it. Yeah. And it has these like tingly things so, like little pom-poms going out of it like little roots. <laughs> but it's actually... Relo's dead nettles. So we've done nettles and whilst we're here we'll do brambles or blackberries so they are just going over now obviously bramble bushes the wild ones are really invasive they're an absolute pain to get rid of anyone who's taken on an overgrown allotment or garden will testify to that but the fruit that they put off are gorgeous these are obviously rotting now you want to pick them when they're black only don't pick them when they're red or they're going over if they fall off and just squish up by themselves i'll leave them i want nice firm juicy ones but this is a bramble patch here, and this is a small one really, but you can eat the fruits off there, it's no problem, can't you? Yeah, probably there's the biggest, like it would be this huge, mm -hmm. like it would be the size of a mountain though, um, if there was a mountain full of brambles it would call Mount Bramble. <laughs> Do you imagine all the fruits we could get off that and how much cordial and jam we could make? Yeah. Yum yum. Like it would fill the house. It would, wouldn't it? <laughs> So walking up this alleyway, I did want to go another way. Oh, I just got in the head face with a mosquito. So, I'm just going on the climbing tree. So, um, we are going to go and find this walnut tree. Ruth's climbing tree. So, we're going to go and find this walnut tree that my friend um, tipped us off about the other day. <laughs> and um, apparently it's dropping its nuts now so we're going to go <laughs> we're going to go and um, harvest some of those and apparently the squirrels throw the nuts so we're going to see if they can spot them this patch over here actually has lots of lovely wild garlic in it so feel free if you're around in the uk to come here and have a look thank you Ruth. but um you don't really want to pick anything nettles blackberries anything that you're foraging if it's somewhere where like dogs can get to and we on a lot i mean it doesn't bother some people you wash it off it's not the end of the world you know but um it's just something to keep in mind now last night the temperatures got down sorry last night the temperatures got down to nearly zero and tonight we're due a frost so once we finish foraging we're going to take a detour back to the plot and we are going to pick the squash that's ready our cucumbers tomatoes and no straight on this time and some nasturtiums for an interesting new recipe but i'll tell you more about that in a bit so top tip that 
if you don't know what something is, you don't eat it because it might be poisonous or make you ill, you're probably allergic to it. So make sure you look up on it first before you know what to know what it is before you eat it and have a look. Yeah. What's this plant over here with the red berries on? Hawthorn. No, not this one. Uh, I forgot. We had it, we saw it before, didn't we? Yeah, we harvested loads recently, didn't we? What, what can you think? It? What was it? Ruh. Rose hips. Well done. So these are rose hips and some people think that they're poisonous but they're not. So really they're just friendly. So you can just Wow. Um, well you can try making them into a jam which will be cool. And um it's actually better to try stuff and make stuff than buying it from shops because it actually doesn't have chemicals in so it's really healthier than just getting it with the chemicals on so you can make it with probably with these wool hips yep so you can get a bundle if you wanted and yeah can i tell them how to prepare them yes okay isn't she knowledgeable hey you're good All right rose hips now they are a skin they are a skin irritant inside they have lots of little hairy seeds that if you were a terrible child like i was you um break them open and put them down someone's back and it's called itching powder don't recommend you do that though that's not a recommendation but these are extremely high in vitamin c and i think it's no coincidence that coming into the autumn winter period when most people come down with colds really and flu good. they're really good but all of these berries and fruits which are high in vitamin c and help us fight off colds are all ready to harvest. Now, rose hips um, are traditionally made into a syrup, which is like a winter cold syrup, and I'm doing that, and I'm pairing it up with elderberries too, because they're another one which have just gone over now. You probably can't harvest them anymore unless you're really up north in the UK. Um, but they're really, really good at helping you fight off the first stages of cold. Um, in the wars, they used to use them, and um, I've spoken to some of my older friends, shall we say, and they say that it was tradition that every year they used to go foraging with their parents, get loads of rose hips, and then they would make rose hip syrup and have that spoonful every day to keep the cold away. So these you chop up and steep, but um, don't eat them raw because they are an internal irritant as well as a skin irritant too. But they're very, very good for you and um, they come in big fat rose hips or small pointy ones like that and they come from the wild dog rose which in the UK rambles everywhere they're absolutely beautiful and I myself I am doing the rose hip syrup to help us with winter colds and also I'm making rose hip wine which I'm telling myself is going to be high in vitamin C too and obviously will help to fight off any winter colds although I have to leave it to mature for a year so it'll be for next winter but still it all helps doesn't it what's so, this one yet again this is gonna be called hawthorn this is hawthorn isn't it and um just like um the rose hips they're actually not poisonous they're not poisonous no but people think they are don't they yeah yeah so they're actually not poisonous and really good to actually save they're really good jams if you made it, make them as a jam. Yep. Now Hawthorn, we get somewhere where you can see it better. They have big spikes on them. Can you see here? And they have, Rue describes these leaves as a kind of oak leaf. She says they look like oak leaves. That's what she's written in her um, foraging book. But they've got a longer stem on the end. They come into flower in May and they smell absolutely amazing. And then they set these gorgeous red berries that are ready to harvest. Sorry, there is a road nearby um, from September onwards. If they're really squishy, don't pick them, but these are about perfect because they're, um, you can squash them. Again, they're really high in vitamin C, very good for you. And my friend yesterday posted um, some pictures up and she made hawthorn ketchup, which is something I've never done before. But I am actually going to be foraging some hawthorn and making it myself, which I will put like, on Instagram. Or I may film it if I can. But something to note is these are right next to a road 
and I wouldn't pick these because they pick up the pollutants from the, the cars. So if you are foraging, keep that in mind. Try and get bushes or trees that are further away from roads and haven't been sprayed. What have you just found? So I found this white and water over there and also conkers can be used to turn into a soap. Also they're poisonous but don't worry, they'll be the poison will wash out once you've tamed them and stuff like that. <laughs> right. And also, this is like a horse... Horse chestnut. Horse chestnut. Not a sweet chestnut. Not a sweet no. chestnut. No, so conkers aren't edible, but we're going to use them to make laundry soap, aren't we? Yep. Yep, so normal conkers. Can I have it a second? There you go. Yeah. They are round and shiny, and they come in kind of round um, shell casing with... Um, it's shiny with small little spikes on, not like the horse chestnut, um, no, the sweet chestnut, which has really thin spiky ones on, and then they are flat and edible and delicious. Ta-da! What did you find? Walnuts. Gentle They're all around, on. so we've got to go find them. Walnut. Is that? Yeah, go get them for me. Good finds, Missy. Just while I'm here, I want to show you the other variety of rose hips. Ouchie! The are, these are the big fat ones. They've obviously got more juiciness to them than the other ones, but you can use either for making rose hip syrup. They like radishes, don't they? Now this is a conker tree, the horse chestnut tree, the one that we can't eat from. Um, show you the leaves. They have these beautiful huge leaves. Now this is a disease that our chestnut trees are getting here in the UK. It's um it's quite devastating to them actually. It's really sad. I think this one's dropped most of its fruits now. Look, there's one! There's a conker! Oh I found one! Also I found a baby. Conker. I found one. And you got a baby one? Never one's for the collection. Mm -hmm. Come on then. Mushrooms. What do we do with mushrooms? Leave them. Leave them. Well done. Hey kitty. You're beautiful. <laughs> now here we've got the blackberry that's now gone red because they've gone over next to this berry. And this one is poison. If you see these lovely white berries, I used to call them bubblegum when I was a little kid. They're not edible. I'll put the name of that plant on the screen. I can't remember what it is now. And this is an elderberry plant or elder. Sorry pigeons. You can just see some of the berries that are going over now. You shouldn't eat elderberries raw. They're fine once cooked. But... And the thing about mushrooms too, like Rue just said, leave them. Yes, there's, there's two reasons why we don't pick mushrooms. One, I'm allergic to them. So I've never really been inclined to learn about them too much. Um, before. My dad taught me a lot about foraging when I was a kid. Now obviously that we've walked past loads and loads of plants that I do know some information about but not a lot so I don't really want to give you that information. But um, mushrooms is something I've never really looked into so I'm allergic to them and also with mushrooms unless you absolutely 100% know what you're doing it's not worth it. You know all mushrooms are edible but most of them only once so they say. Um, there are lots of ones that look like the edible varieties, but they've just got one minor difference and that can be a deadly mushroom. So unless you absolutely know what you're doing with mushrooms, don't pick them, don't eat them. So we made it back to the plot and this was what we got. It's not a huge amount, but it's okay. They come in these green shells and then, if I can get it off with one hand, I probably can't, can I? There you go, just break that off and then you've got the nut inside which I'll leave to dry in our new pantry if you've seen it on our community post or on Instagram. So they'll just dry off and we didn't want loads and um, we just wanted them to put into our Christmas nut roast. So they'll be a lovely addition, something that we foraged ourselves so I'm happy with those. Now I've just had a quick walk around and I'm trying to keep out of the sun um, and we didn't have a frost slap tonight as far as I knew but the plants are definitely showing frost damage so I'm going to go around now and I'm going to harvest everything that's frost tender and the new beans I'm going to cover with fleece because we've only got one more night of a good frost um, 
and whilst everything else is ready to harvest those new beans are still quite like small and tender and after this the temperatures are going back up again so if I can give them the chance to grow on a bit then with the fleece then that's that's ideal but um, let's go around and do a harvest and then we'll cover things up and then I'll tell you about the nasturtiums. Right believe it or not the first thing we're going to harvest is plantain. Now plantain has similar properties to comfrey which means it's good for inflammation and um, I've got a spider web on me and healing muscles and wounds. Now comfrey is also known as knit bone and we're going to harvest some of that in a minute and it heals very very quickly whereas plantain doesn't heal wounds or muscles and bones as fast so as a more gentle um, substitute we're going to harvest this and have this dried I did harvest some earlier in the season and I don't know where I put it so I'm going to go around and harvest a bag of plantain for drying for over winter and I do need to get a hell of a lot more comfrey before the frost hits that as well because I'm down to one jar so but I'm going to tell you more about the comfrey when we go over there in a minute before I do that though I'm going to move these potatoes into the greenhouse I don't want the frost getting to those so I'm going to get this plantain and then we're going to go and harvest some vegetables too. So I've got about half a big sandwich bag that has been reused, don't worry that's been used already, <laughs> of plantain and then I'm going to get some more of these comfrey leaves. Now comfrey are used, let me stand up, comfrey are used on mostly on pulled mussels and on um, like aches and pains and trap nerves and things like that. I would say it's a gentle plant, but it works, it kicks ass. Um, I dry it out and then when I want to use it, I put a handful in a bowl of hot water, let it steep for about an hour. Then I wrap it, the leaves, squeeze them out in a piece of muslin and then I put it on the area that hurts. Now, a little while ago, I didn't make any videos for nearly three weeks. That's because I had very, very painful shoulder, neck, head. Um, it was a combination of trapped nerves, pulled muscles, there was all sorts going on. Um, I was put on codeine to deal with it and the codeine wasn't touching me. No painkillers were working at all and it was just absolute agony. I used comfrey. I thought, why haven't I done this? I did a comfrey compress for two days for about three hours a day and it was gone. Honestly, it was it was that quick. I absolutely adore the stuff. Now, I did keep on with my painkillers and that at that time as well, so it wasn't just the comfrey, but um, yeah, I love the stuff. So I dry it out and then I just store it in jars. I've also sent some to Cheryl at Homestead in the Highlands to see if it helps with her fibromyalgia pain, um, which I don't know if it does, but it's an interesting experiment anyway. We use it externally. Now, there is concern with comfrey over using it on wounds. So if you have a cut, comfrey will actually help to heal the cut back together. But the problem with that is that often the cut will actually heal so fast that it can actually trap in bacteria so if you are using it in that way then just be aware that it can make it heal too fast and it also if you have a fracture or a break which is the same thing then um, you can use a comfrey poultice wrapped around that and it will help to heal it faster because its common name is knit bone because that's what it used to be used for to help bones heal I forgot to bring my basket over so Rue's gone to get it for me so while we're waiting to get my basket so I can harvest this comfrey I'll show you I'll show you fever few isn't this a lovely sunny sight oh the sun's come out just in time look at that so this is fever few which looks like daisies but the leaves look a little bit like hawthorn leaves and oak leaves really don't they they're very nice um but this Fever few, it was traditionally used to lower temperatures, but there is also um, evidence that chewing the leaves or using the leaves as a tea will help prevent migraines if you take it early enough when you know migraines coming on. So I'm harvesting some of this today to give to my mommy because my mommy suffers terrible migraines and for some reason I've never harvested it for it before. Thank you very much, Missy. So we're going to get some fever few. It's more the leaves than the flowers, but um, I usually cut these and actually keep them as like flowers in the house because they look really beautiful and they brighten up a room. Right, obviously 
most people know Comfrey. Sorry, it's wobbling. You're sitting on a pile of fences. <laughs> Bruce just jumped off. So most people use Comfrey as a um, a tea to feed their plants. So you would just get the, the leaves, put them in water, weigh them down, and then you get a lovely stinky tea that is a good fertilizer for your plants. So if you want to do stuff organically, then that's a great way to use Comfrey. Now the plants can become quite invasive. They are massive, but um, absolutely worth it in your garden. You got a ladybird. And also the bees adore them, so for that alone. Stop making it wobble. It tickles. You little ladybird. Um, so yeah, that's comfrey. Um, I just want to say a quick word though, that obviously I'm talking to you here about plants that have what I call plant, um, plant power. <laughs> um, because we can use them as a natural form of medicine and some, mostly a gentle form of natural medicine. Now this is something that I do, this is my opinion. I'm just showing you how I forage and how I harvest and what I use them for. You must be careful of allergies you um, must be sure that you know what you're picking and um, it's no replacement for normal medicine I do use normal medicine as well but if I can I will treat something with this first and um, I have often been told the buzzard rue I've been told by doctors that um, something was in a really bad state and then I have used natural medicine and it's cured it and they've been absolutely outstanding so that's usually something like garlic. Garlic is my antibiotic, so yeah. So we've got comfrey, I'm going to get some food for you, and then we are going to go and harvest plants to protect them from the frost. And you're gonna help me pick the nasturtions, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, these cucumber plants looked absolutely fine the other day, and now they're dying back. Um, I think they must have had a touch of frost last night. We do have some good cucumbers on here. So I'm gonna take these off, but, after that, I'm just going to leave the plant and see what it does. We have baby ones. Oh, look at this one. Growing through. Do you want to cut the cucumbers off for me? Sure. Come on. Do you take it? This one here? You'll get the cucumbers. Oh, let me get it then. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can you find any more? Thank you. We've only got a couple of cucumbers, but it saves them being damaged by frost. This spoon plant also is dying right back. It definitely got frost last night. There's loads and loads of fruit on here. Some of it has just started to ripen. Some of it's like orange. So in a minute, after I finish filming, I'm going to go through and pick all of those. A lot of people over on Instagram have been asking about seeds for the spoon tomatoes. I am saving them, as I keep saying. I've got a lot and even with these fruits here there's plenty for us to eat and save more seeds so those seeds will be available soon once I finish processing everything it just takes forever right I'm going to pick these beans in a minute if they get frosted I'm not too concerned health and safety issues here chickpeas well you've seen the tour video they're not worth worrying about but these ones I want to protect because we've only got one good frost coming and um, you know, it's all soggy at that end and then they'll be fine so I'm going to cover these up protect them from the frost for one night and then hopefully they will be okay and go on producing for a little while that's those all tucked up in bed right squash wise you can see that this plant's blackening and um, I think it has going by the leaves I think this has been touched by frost so can you grab this squash and I'll cut it with the other hand. Hold the bottom of it so it doesn't drop to the floor. You got it? Yeah. Now when cutting squash guys, if I can just get in rooster, you want to leave as long a stem on it as possible so that it doesn't rot back. And ideally you want the stem to be going brown and corky like this because then you know it's ready. Ta-da! Show me. One Burgess buttercup. It's a Burgess buttercup squash. Right then, nasturtions, which are these flowers, in case you were unsure. These here. I hope you can see. Yeah, these. And they are edible. You may see them often um, dressed in salads and things like that. They're beautiful and tasty. But today, we are going to fill a jar because I am going to make nasturtion jelly. 
Now the station jelly is something that I learned about earlier today. So I grabbed my jar and I was like, when we go foraging, we're going to pick those nasturtiums. If they get hit by the frost, they're gone. So this might be my last chance to make this. But basically, you want about two cups. So that's about this jar full, roughly, of nice nasturtium flowers, such as these. That um, they may have bugs in, but we'll get rid of those in a bit, that aren't going over and are nice, healthy plants. Now, we pop them in the jar, we fill the jar up, and then we soak them in cold water for a couple of hours so that any bugs and nasties in there come on out. Strain them, and then we um, soak them in water overnight, so it makes like a tea, and then sieve off the flowers, add sugar and treat it like a jelly. You need to add pectin. I'm going to put the recipe to it below, um, but apparently it tastes like sunshine and today is very sunny and I'm in the mood to make some sunshine jelly. So let's get picking some nasturtium flowers. One jar of picked nasturtiums, aren't they pretty? I think we just had enough for the recipe requirements of flowers that were in their prime. Lovely yellow one. We have buzzards flying around across these trees and they're getting attacked by the crows. <laughs> it's always fun to watch. They're absolutely beautiful birds. Buzzards and crows are two of our favourite birds. So, um, yeah, so we've harvested some vegetables, we've covered up the beans, and um, now we're going to go home and soak these nasturtiums. We've got our comfrey, um, which by the way, when you're drying it, dry it somewhere, you know, out of the way, because it can be a bit stinky, just like when you make nettle tea. Um, nettle tea and comfrey tea, both of them. <laughs> and um, yeah, we've had a good, a good forage today. So thank you for coming with us. I hope that you've learned something new. As I said, this is just something that we do. You don't have to do it. We're just sharing what we do. So, okay. Thanks for watching. This has been Jazz and Ruth from Altentis Small Holding and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.